How y'all like in April so far? I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. So quick story, when I went and bought my car, I um, manifested, was given the opportunity to buy a new car. And when I went into the first dealership, um, I specifically wanted a Mitsubishi because my Dodge Colt I'd had back in the day was a uh, best bang for my buck car I've ever had. And it was the best, uh, I never had any issues with it. So Mitsubishi is where I went. And I told myself I would go to three dealerships. So I walked into the Mitsubishi dealership and uh, the sales lady, I had you know called upon the best sales lady I could get and I got her. Um, I shocked the fuck out of her when I said I want a standard car with no bells and whistles. Well apparently they don't really um, keep in stock standard cars anymore. And uh, so she was already shocked by that. And then what did, she's like, what do you mean by no bells and whistles? I was like, I don't want that fucking camera shit on my car. And I want manual windows. And you know, I want this, 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 and I don't want that, that, that. And basically, um, yeah, she had never met anybody like me in this generation. <clears throat> she said, um, manual windows don't exist anymore. And I was like, yes, they do. My sister just bought a brand new Jeep. Um, it's 2000. 19 or 18 whatever it is and uh, it's got manual windows I want manual windows too I don't want them I don't want the buttons and then she kind of looked at me and you know I'd only known her five minutes by then and uh, yeah we were in nut bar land it was fun I had a good time buying my car anyways uh, long story short she basically said there's nothing on the lot it'll take this amount of time to get the car and I'm like well, my baby blue is falling apart at the seams. Uh, I'll need it as fast as possible. I'll go to wherever the car is and go get it myself. Again, she's kind of in shock, uh, whatever. And um, so we talk pricing and we, we talk all this and she's like, what color do you want? And you know, as, as, as much as I love color, I was like, I, I want gray or black. I just, I, I, I don't want it to stand out bad mistake because every fucking car in the bay here is black well not every car but every little car is black almost so I walk into other people's cars or go to unlock the door of other people's cars pretty much every time I go out <laughs> oh well anyways so after our conversation and you know the pricing and and, and the fact that there was no car in stock uh, I was basically walking out of the dealership with my daughter and had the door handle in my hand and was opening the door and she's like wait wait I was like wait for what and she's like I have one car I'm like what you said you didn't have any and she's like I, I, I didn't even realize we had one I we don't keep them in stock and um, I have one and she's like, the only thing about it is it actually has like those window thingies, like so that the rain's not coming like right down. And it's got some other stuff like inside that's already been installed. So it's already been prettied up. And basically that would come with the car or it would be extra to take it off. I'm like, that's whatever, let me go try it. Anyways, it's just your basic, like it's just a little Mitsubishi Mirage. I, I didn't want something that was high on gas and I just want to get around and uh, I went and tried it out I loved it and uh, I said okay I'm gonna go check out a couple other dealerships just to you know see for the bang for my buck and uh, I'll you know I'll let you know I went to two other dealerships and you know didn't get the same response because I didn't get into it as much as I did with her um, the first place I went to after Mitsubishi I forget if it was what it was Anyways, I didn't really want that car. I just was doing that thing where I check three th three options and I'm gonna choose the best one. So basically the second place was as shocked that I wanted a standard and it was five to eight weeks before I could get one. And uh, the price was like huge, like $8,000 more than the other one. When I went to the third dealership, which was the Chrysler Dodge Jeep, whatever, 
obviously I wanted the Jeep and that's not where I'm at right now. So I went into the sales office and, and I says to the guy, your name is uh, Denis whatever, uh, je me souviens pas. Uh, you speak French? And he's like, no, I just have the name. So right away we clicked. And uh, then I told him what I wanted and you know him as well, don't have any in stock, blah, blah, blah. And then I start to tell him about what I have at Mitsubishi. That's you know my first thing. And he looks at me when I tell him the price and he's in shock. He's like, that's impossible. You can't get a car at that price right now. And I was like, well, yeah, I have the quote and it even has like winter tires and on rims and everything. And he's like, and it's like at 0%, I can, you know, like there's no interest. And basically he's in shock and he's like, do you have written proof of this? Like, it sounds impossible. I was like, yeah, I do. So I went in the car and I got it and I brought it back to him and he looked it over and he's like, girl, I could never do this for you. What are you doing here? Why did you take the time to come look at other cars? Go get that car. And I was like, what? You're like a salesman telling me to go buy that car? And he's like, yeah, don't tell anybody. And he actually made sure nobody was like looking and listening to us. And uh, basically he, he's like, go get that car. You can't get a deal like this anywhere. This is like too good to be true. <clears throat> he's like, if it's written down in black and white, go get that car. I looked at him and I, I wanted to cry. I was like, thank you so much. I was like, my daddy's like too far to help me. And me calling him all day, you know, and I, I was like, I have nobody here who could have helped me like this. And I, I was like, thank you so much. Like good things are gonna happen to you just for being like kind and not doing the salesman wolf thing and being like kind, thank you. Anyways, uh, so I went back and long story short, I got the car. And the reason I'm babbling on about my car is because even my car is getting involved now in the sink stuff in the sense of like, what the fuck is going on? I don't know. One of the reasons I didn't want any bells and whistles is I don't want all that computer shit on my car. I've got the backup camera, which I never use. It's just a big screen that actually just bothers me that it's there. It's got a glare that comes from the sun. Like, anyways, it is what it is. You can't buy a basic fucking car anymore. And uh, this morning when I went to get a coffee, I always look at my mileage just for the numbers of it and never, you know, at a specific time, like it's not like right when I enter the car it's, or, you know, I just, I will always randomly look at my mileage. And when I looked at my mileage, I hadn't touched any buttons and it's 79K. And I'm like, what the fuck? So as I'm driving, I'm looking at my mileage thingy, which is not on my true mileage anymore, but it's bouncing up randomly. And I, I didn't, because I was driving and if I would have pulled over, it would have stopped changing numbers. I, I wasn't able to tell. I think they were all odd numbers, but it was going up by like series of twos or, or five. I think, like I said, I, it could be wrong in the sense that, you know, I'm driving the kids in the back. I'm also getting my sing songs and uh, I, I'm just like, what the fuck are these numbers? And the three that I managed to like remember was the first one. It was at 79. The second is the last uh, thing when I pulled into the driveway was 205. And then when I shut the car off, which never happens, there was zero one. 001 and that stayed on until I went to grab my phone to write these numbers down because I in human 3d me I have a tendency to be only dyslexic with numbers and I'm learning to stop saying that about myself so that I, I stop doing that and also I also in human 3d me and that person that can see something and then forget it the instant I see it and I have to reprogram myself to just take the mental photograph and not need to grab my phone. So I'm in the stages of doing that right now. Anyways, if anybody's got like weird stuff going on with their car too, let me know. Yeah, I didn't sleep again. It's my third night with uh, falling asleep between. I don't do the thing that everybody else, you know, does is like grab and look at the numbers. Um, 
for me it's just because I have like looked at the numbers like so much like all my life I was 11 11 before I was even like knowing how to tell the time uh, making wishes on 11 11 I, I didn't even know that was a thing because I thought I made that up in my own head um, until I was in you know a certain age um, I've always looked at the numbers series so sometimes it's a lot of times now it's just like what I don't know it's like I, I, I want to get the, the messages from within instead of with the actual going to look for a number even if I'm unless I'm really guided and then I do um, well, not always even but um, yeah so I, I'm falling asleep between 3 30 a.m. and 5 30 a.m. Eastern time Eastern time so for me um, right now I'm in like low body movement mode where you know my head is saying go stretch go do this go do that and then my in in my higher self is like nope just lay here and get the uh, I'm doing like a lot of remote viewing um, I can't say what I'm viewing not because I'm hiding it I just don't know uh, I think I said it in my first video the other night when I came come back online. I am like seeing past, present, and future, and it's global. It's not necessarily mine. Uh, it, I I I can't wrap my words around it because I don't have the words. I'm just doing what I'm guided to do. Um, in these states that I'm having, like these trance-like states, um, I'm kind of bouncing out of bed every one to two hours maybe because I'm guided to go see something um, um, on YouTube um, messages specifically that I are, are activating what I'm seeing next in my remote viewing I don't know how much that makes sense but uh, yeah a lot of um, my chosen veils are coming off and I'm finding it um, funny how I plan this for myself because I'm fast backwards in things that I could have seen months ago on videos that were readily available because I only watch what I'm guided to watch. Now they're coming to me, even if they've been there for, you know, a month, two months, three months. I could have looked at them before, but I was never guided to them. So it's like I'm Little Red Riding Hood. Who's, who picked, no, Hansel and Gretel, I'm picking up the breadcrumbs, but backwards, because they were always there, and I'm just seeing them now, <laughs> so it's kind of funny, and because of the way that I, I, um, I see my videos as well, like, when I choose people to sub, I always go look at their channel to see what it is that's drawing me in, some people it's their playlists, and their songs that I, 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 I'm going to get because they haven't um, exposed themselves yet. And when I say they haven't exposed themselves yet, I don't consider these people hiders. I consider these people to be of the utmost light workers who are just haven't been activated to do these things. Or like I told specifically someone in an email the other day, W, um, we are not meant to all do the YouTube stuff. And the work that we do internally and through what we're grounding, uh, anchoring, and being the lighthouses in our regions uh, is for the whole collective consciousness. So it's like huge. So the whole like, uh, I'm not sure, I, I think I should be doing this, I think I should be doing that. If you haven't done a YouTube vid yet, it's because you're not meant to. Like, don't feel bad about it. Like, feel good about it. Like, it's a whole different level of differentness. And it's not for everybody. So, yeah. When I go in and then I check the top thing where people have, you know, like, some people like me, I, I don't think I have, you know, an about thing because I've never written anything about myself. Um, I, I don't have a community tab. And, you know, some people have those. What I see is like that it's probably grandfathered things, like people who subscribe to YouTube like a long time ago will have more tabs. And then people like me who, I never even checked YouTube, like no matter how many people would tell me, go watch this, go watch that. I was like, no, I don't watch stuff until like December. It was like, okay, I'm going. Um, yeah, so 
Vamos a hacer. Yeah, so I do have the opportunity when I go sub somebody to go like, you know, go look at all their videos. But the way that I have two devices that I go on YouTube on, my iPad, I'm pushing away the update to make sure that it doesn't just do whatever uh, Apple wants it to do. And so I don't even have community tab thing opportunity on, on this device. And my LG, which is like, you know, an old LG, does the updates itself. And I have different ways. Like my iPad only shows the latest six videos of somebody. So it looks like they don't have a lot. And then all of a sudden in my, in my home of my LG, these videos pop up for me. I know, it's weird. It's how I roll. It's... So yeah, I'm picking up the breadcrumbs backwards. And this is like the like is this is getting fun now this is getting good in the sense that um every time i think i know something then other knowledge comes to me so i you know like people like asia who have attained a certain level and they're the mentors and and what i love about asia i know i talk about her a lot is that you know like she fully owns the fact that you know although she's at a certain level that she has shadow work as well she's not saying like I'm here and I'm like at ultimate pivot I know everything uh, you never know everything and she for me is a shining example of truth in the sense that she says that uh, I'm very weary and don't even watch anymore the people who say they know everything because if you think you know everything, like, you know nothing. That's just, like, that's it. And, and I'm not saying that in a bad, mean, or yucky way. It's just when you think you've grasped certain things, like, you're just up-leveled to something different. And I love the way that Asia speaks about that where like she says, if you have the downtime, enjoy it because I'm not getting that. And how she, in her latest couple of videos, she said like, I thought I was doing this, this and this, and now it's this. And, and that she has to also like surrender all the time. The surrender part never ends and never ends, whatever. Like we don't know like the ultimate whatever in what we're living these times this part it never ends so you know when you think you know your mission even if you're in it like asia boom like other stuff comes in and like that's why i say this is getting good now because to what point um i'm just going with it and uh, I like having been taken out of the the dream time sleep like a lot mode right now because I'm realizing to what point that those different timeline things that I was having like issues with I guess is because I was being poked at in dream time in certain ways that were making me feel that way Whereas the lack of sleep right now and being more like just surrender and what's coming to me is elevating me more because it's my stuff and nothing's poking at me. I don't know if I'm describing that good and I'm not trying to hide words. I just, those are the words that I have that come through. And the bestest thing yesterday when I get up and you know I'm guided to these few videos that I watch and then go back to bed is that I'm still hungry so I'm just like eating either whatever I have or whatever I crave <laughs> and um, it was about I don't know maybe 5 a.m. half of it is that my body just knows I can feel the Sun coming I don't know if anybody like resonates with that in the sense that I don't really need to know what earth 3d time is I can already feel it in my body 
that the sun's about to come up so it's like for me right now my cycle is that when when the sun's about to come up I go down you know that's when I am able to get you know three four five hours of sleep and this changes for me all the time but right now in the last three days that's the cycle I'm in but my favorite thing last night was that I was activated or or triggered by certain videos so I went to lay down and had a giggle fit that I don't know how long it lasted I know that I was like in my blankets like a kid laughing so much that I was afraid to wake up the real kid that you know her room is right near mine and the more I would think that I'm gonna wake up the kid the more I would laugh and then I would laugh and then be reminded of what I saw in the video and all the stuff that I got from it that I was bouncing off and would be saying to the person that I saw in the video and the conversation was just like of like it was past you know a Harold and Kumar moment of like just being in a laughing state that lasted so long I think I fell asleep laughing and that was cool and part of it had to do with my kid, her nickname, she's seven, and she grew up with teenagers. And growing up with teenagers, she grew up with teenager friends in the sense that, you know, our kids, our blended family at the time, had more teenagers. So I think it was when she was two that she was nicknamed the kid. And the first time I heard that, I was like, okay, her name is Lily Rose, you know? <laughs> like, why are you calling her a kid? the kid and um when they said who baptized her that uh um i i turned it around and i enjoyed it and as with, with any other nickname um as if it's said in joy and you know in a good positive way um it's a good thing but yeah the fact that i called her we, I call her a kid like was activating another like inside joke inside me of like just like giggles and laughter that was not stopping so that was cool is that when I finally did finally when I fell asleep it was in like just ex I wasn't even exhausted it was just like I couldn't stop laughing to the point where it was either fall asleep or just keep laughing which is a really cool way to fall asleep Yeah, um, one of the videos that I watched last night, oh man, I forget what her name is. I don't know if I can pull it up fast enough to not just drag it on. I found, I was guided to someone new for me that, you know, is amazing. I forget her name, so I want to I wanna shout her out. She resonates with me. Um, I've been wondering who the goddess in pink is that comes to me. Turns out it was Persephone. And um, the other goddess, which I knew it was Athena, but at the same time, I wasn't um, giving her the credit she deserved within. And I'm so sorry, baby. Um, Alyssa Reynolds. Um, Athena, owning your power. It's a vid that was put out a month ago, but that really resonates with how I am um, guided to um, uh, act. Um, I forget the wording that Alyssa said, but in her Athena video, but it was something like, um, I, I'm going to put it in my words. It was something like, when you see someone struggling, you just go in and grab them. And not meaning like, I'm going to save you, grab you. But uh, the example I'll give is the other day, a video popped up for me from somebody who was being vulnerable, authentic, and transparent and asking for help. And I went in there with my little guns and arrows blazing and shone, shined my light as it, I just let it pour. 
Um, and as cheesy as my comments can sound, uh, when I say it and I write it, I believe it. So when I go in and say, I'm protecting you and surrounding you in pink and blue and yellow, feel my protection. And that I can go and make someone who's in like wherever USA that I can't even get to, but I'm getting to them like boom with who I am, my higher self, my angels and guides are like right there. Um, so she confirmed to me that I was doing for me what is my mission um, as much as I, you know, want to be driving around and just shining the light that's not where I'm at and so like I do that in my everyday when I'm guided and, and, and I do not I repeat I do not see anyone as asleep anymore I do not consider anyone a sheep anymore did I say yesterday my sister is choosing 3d mode more than anything else yes that is a fact but she is not a sheep and she is not asleep. Um, and that's the thing, my perception of all of humanity, the humans on this planet, is at the level for me where there are no sheep, everyone is a master whether they think they know it or not. The masters that say they are masters, I, I tend to shy away from because they're spouting it so much that I gravitate to the ones who think they're like lost and drowning because I can see the light in their eyes that is so pure and so transparent that the ones who are saying they're masters sometimes have ego in their eye saying they are masters. And that is not to say they are not because we are all masters. And I had that song when I made a video last night, <clears throat> um, Avril Lavigne, I, I can't remember the name of it, where, you know, she, she says, save me, I'm drowning, I forget. And the, I, you know, I asked why specifically this song for how I'm feeling, it should have been one of my happy-go-lucky, cheesy, cheery songs, like, ooh la la, you know, like, that's how I feel. Why did I be guided to put this song on repeat? And it's because I feel the whole collective consciousness everywhere waking up. And unlike how I would have been months ago, years ago, drowning in it, feeling this, I feel it as beautiful. Like just saying it, I got shivers everywhere. I am not attached to the people that are drowning, but I am connected with them. Does that make sense? So my detachment is so big that the empath in me isn't sitting here crying and like hurt that, you know, events are happening and that people are choosing one path or another or that collectively everyone is waking up. The empath in me has that, the detachment where I can feel when I need to come see a video and go grab a light worker by giving the light away without hesitating, without thinking like, oh, this could be misinterpreted. Like, am I projecting? Am I doing this? Am I doing that? It's like, no, go in, do the job, get the fuck out. If there's more comments to be had, I'll give them. I always give my email out if people feel like they need to come back for more come on come on over come on in uh, my email is right under my subscription stuff you need the light come and grab it it's right here for you um, shields up and then shields completely down as well meaning that I'm not judging who's coming to me the way that I was even a little bit ago and, and, and afraid of certain things. Uh, I, I can talk however you need me to talk, meaning, you know, depending on what the person needs, I am detached from the outcome of it because I see everybody waking up and as afraid of that as I was even 
I, I don't know, like date wise or whatever. Um, I, I don't have that. Something inside me has really clicked and overcome um, being the light that it's not sucking something out of me. Uh, my week offline, my deleting my videos is what enabled me to be able to reach this spot for myself. And um, I'm enjoying it. I really, really am. I really, really am enjoying this now. It's a different level of being able to see through things and not being affected by it. It's the ability to see and feel the poking and just cut it off. Uh, I watched a video last night. I forget. The, it's in my stuff. I think I saved it, but I commented on it. It was from Higher Self. It was a tarot reading. And I knew this is the messages that were for me when it's every trigger word and thing that I needed was there. And the one specific thing, like for me, if you know, my tattoo, my anchor, uh, my anchor was being pulled at, I, I wasn't able to just pull my anchor in the way I wanted to. It was being pulled at where the attachments that I thought I had that were not real are not able to attain how I feel the same way anymore. And that's a cool, like, it's like liberating. It's like, it's like when you think you can breathe and then you hit another level of breathing that is like, <gasps> it's like so amazing. Anybody else doing that thing where you hold your breath and just like, maybe you're not timing it, but are like, holy shit. Like I could be underwater for like a hell of a long time like now. And you know, not have to come up for air. My only issue with underwater is I still got that thing where I'm scared of water going up my nose. So that's my goal, like to conquer that. Um, I, I've always had that thing of water up my nose and not liking that. And although I'm like the mermaid and the dolphin, um, I've always had that where if I go underwater, I'm still plugging my nose. So I tried to overcome it last summer and then I choked a couple times so much that I just kind of stopped. And I, I'm practicing in the bath right now, so I hope to attain that because I, I shouldn't need to plug my nose. That's a fear that is, it's not real. Get out of me. Anyways, I think I'm done rambling on. One song that I always, I've put it on people's timelines before, but 5440 Canadian rock um, sublime like me I love that song that's a 5440 uh, if you don't know them because you're not from Canada or they didn't I, I, I don't know if they made it anywhere else Hootie and the Blowfish redid I go blind yeah Hootie didn't write that 5440 did back in the 80s or early 90s um, one gun by 5440 that's like one of my top go-to songs. I like putting songs out there. Discovering new songs is one of my favorite things. I love when people share their music with me. Why? Because I'm rural. I only have a certain amount of radio stations. I discovered Tool like two years ago. And by discovered Tool, I mean I realized a couple of their songs that are radio played I knew. But otherwise, like Tool was like... It was a whole new world. It was like when I was like a kid and then all of a sudden discovered Meatloaf who had been around since I was born and my dad played certain songs but because he didn't have the cassette or the 8-track or the album at home that I felt I discovered them or Genesis or, or Led Zeppelin even or Alice Cooper. Like they were there. I heard the radio played songs but when I went in and got like every other thing like I always 
realized like those radio played songs are awesome like they're the ones that we know like since forever but when you go deeper into a band is like holy shit like and that's again the thing when you think you know everything you know nothing because if you think you know music and you think you know like where your sinks are when you get like so new stuff and when you like open your mind to everyone you know some people have what I call like uh, music racism where oh Taylor Swift I can't listen to her oh fuck uh, <laughs> she's got some lyrics in there that will like fucking activate you holy shit or you know like <clears throat> the best way for me when I don't vibe with a certain genre of music is going to get the covers because somebody singing it in a different voice that is more soothing or more like in your face depending on what kind of you know attitude that I'm feeling in the moment is a rediscovery like Britney Spears baby one more time a guy singing that acoustic is like amazing yeah if I could gift you with one Canadian like iconic oh my god when Gord Downey passed away seven days seven days seven days that the rock radio here only played the tragically hip that is how Gord Downey <laughs> I got shivers everywhere I yeah I prayed Gord Downey a lot um, if you don't know the tragically hip yet um, welcome to a new world, poet, prophet, a band that is, um, that never sold out, that never played the game, and that, um, yeah. I'm done. Have a good day.